Do you want me to turn it over and show you what? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. We'll try to turn it Okay. All right. This guy, we have to keep upright. Uh -huh. He's got oil. Right. In it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Nothing on the accelerator pump whatsoever. Okay. All right. Let's see what's going on with the fuel and fuel line and such. Huh? Look at dry. Is it dry? Totally dry. Huh? Okay. Beautiful. And that's a uh, new fuel pump. So what I think I'm going to do, I'll grab. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this, mm -hmm. pop this. I don't want the car to start. Oh, okay. And I want to try to stay away from this, but um, just crank it over for just go because this gas is going to go everywhere. Oh. If this works, it should go everywhere. Oh, okay. I want to be careful of that. Here we'll. So uh, just just a little bit, Jerry. Okay. Don't go nuts with sure. it. Just a little bit. I'll watch. I'll tell you when it turns off. Now? Yeah. Okay, stop. Stop for a second. And nothing, huh? Well, I got a little bit. Um, okay, again, Jerry. Okay. Uh, almost nothing. Really, Franny? Yeah. So that that explains why. Uh, that explains why the carburetor's dry. It's definitely not the carburetor's fault. And. Uh, Did you say it was I don't a new I think it's going to be the filter. That's a brand new filter too. Right? Yeah. Do you so have the old one still? I think it's... We're just trying to move backwards. So the accelerator pump... So the way this worked was the accelerator pump got nothing. Uh -huh. Okay? So right. there's no fuel okay. in the carburetor. Okay. Then we checked the line. The line was dry. Right. Okay. So now we've, we've tried to crank it over and got almost nothing. So right. let's see if there's lots of gas on the other side of this filter. Oh, okay. If there's lots of gas on the other side of the filter, uh -huh. then, then uh, it's the filter. Yeah. yeah. We Some gas there, so... We're going to see Mark's dad. Um, Alright, so we're going to try the same thing we just did. Okay. Um, let, me, let me see if this needs to drain at all. Do you need to drain out? Can you just hang out? Will you be okay there? Don't set anything on fire. We should have a fire extinguisher. Here, I've got mine. Yeah. Check it. Yep. There you go. Anything to is... have in your car. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing okay. now, and we're going to do it with the actual on the pump side and see if it's your filter, and we're going to keep going backwards until we okay. figure out what's causing this. So, um, okay, this is going to be a fuss. If this, yeah, this time yeah, this just, yeah, let's really give it a try. Ready? To... ready? Yep. A little bit. Do it again. Okay. That's your fingers there, Frank. Oh, yeah. mm, I'm not. I'm not feeling the love on that. It's just. I mean, it. It just dribbled. It doesn't From seem the like filter. That's nearly enough. Um. I mean, it would put some gas in it, but. Is that way, huh? Oh. Yeah. Oh, it blows through pretty easily. So it's, it's not the filter. You don't think it is anymore? No, because it, it, it blew through pretty pretty easily. So that would have flowed right through. That's no problem. But there was almost nothing in it either. So makes me wonder if it's the... The next one's going to be the pump. Yeah. Now there's fuel from the pump, from the tank here. See? Looks like we got gas here. Huh. Okay, so that's... Well, the pump is seems to be the culprit, so uh, at this point, I guess we could pull the pump and take a look at it and see how it is and see if there's like just something obvious with the pump. 
It's just one of those days you just don't want to have to go through. These universal joints are great. Oh, they're fantastic, yeah, aren't they? they make life a lot easier. It's important when you take these nuts off that uh -huh. you don't just pull stuff off. You want to get, you want to account for everything. Just right, be sure. like a doctor. Sure. You know, just make sure you account for every nut, washer, everything, because this don't is leave the forceps in there, huh? Right, <laughs> right. I think you'll get sued. Yeah. <laughs> I have to take the carburetor off. Are you guys replacing the part or no? Uh, I was coming up the hill from my daughter's house. She lives just down the hill, uh -huh. and. Uh, it just uh, died on me. Oh, okay. And so, uh... Wait, yes. wait, wait. It's upside down. Is that the right size? Oh, yeah. That'll work. Okay, it's close enough. All right, so we did that and that, that. What else is it? Throttle linkage. Got the electrical lines off. Fuel lines off. I see. And then do the one in the back. All right, we need to set you in a place where you won't fall over. Yo, can I get another? Sure, thing? of course. So I don't want, I, I don't want to make our day worse. So definitely put something oh, okay. in there so nothing can fall in there. Now this will come up. Right. Okay, so just, I mean, it's really simple, right? It just pushes on this. And th this is what plunges that, right? Yeah. Is this the, the plunger? It's so weird. We drove that car all over yesterday. And didn't okay. Have yeah. So let's be the engine, and okay. let's do what the engine does. There's fuel. <laughs> uh, there's fuel there. So let's put this guy on here. Okay. Uh, we can kind of tighten this. Thing. I just I'm not a big fan of gas everywhere. Okay. So in theory, we should be able to push on the bottom of this guy and make this pump do its thing. Oh, I don't know how far it's supposed to push. How hard is it to push? You, the line, yeah, it goes. it's not quite aimed. Okay. Okay, that looks like it's pumping well. Hmm. Okay, that's confusing. So if the pump is pumping, then... And that plunger's working fine, huh? Or is that a little bit sooty? Or? No, I mean, it, it's, it's yeah. it, this rides on a can. Oh, right. Oh, there. okay, sure. And, um, oh. This little guy comes up here and it rides on a cam down in there. Oh, okay. There's going to be oil everywhere in here. So that's why, um, well, I mean, shoot fire. I mean, all it does is just push this little guy in the bottom. We've verified that it yeah. that actually works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but if you're pushing on it, is it maybe something not working to push it? Yeah, well, that's the only other possibility is this rod's not pushing it far enough. Um. Hmm. Hmm. But well, it's working fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we drove all over yesterday. I know. And, uh, yeah, Pretty this morning. I comfortable getting it back and sure, it was running well. I know. And it was running okay. Yeah. Okay, so we should be able to, at this point, we should be able to test, let me get you out of the way. I wonder if we can test, watch this guy go up and down. How? Turn the engine, or turn the engine over a bit. Now, would, would have it been warm or something? No, but you had it warmed yesterday. It was, you know, if, if you thinking know, about it, if it was hot, this uh -huh. rod would be longer, not shorter. Oh, really? Sure. So, oh, okay. that's kind of weird, right? So, yeah. The pump's obviously not hooked up, so we won't have any fuel. I'm just trying to get it out of the way. All right, so um, here's the here's the game plan from here. Okay. I just want to yeah. see this thing go up and down. Oh. I know from sticking my finger under uh -huh. it about how much movement it needs, right. and it I needs see. about three eighths of an inch. To go, will it go up? Or? Yeah. It's, oh, okay. Well, it's either up now or it should go up and down. Oh, sure. So oh, I should really? see it okay. moving quite a bit. Oh, just by turning the starter, huh? Yeah, and everything else is disconnected. Everything else is, should be fine. Mm -hmm. Looking back here, so fire extinguisher is right there. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so go ahead and crank it just uh, for about five seconds. Okay. Or less than that. Even Four seconds. One second. Yeah. Barely moving. I it's can moving see up it. and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's moving up and down. Okay. It looks like it's moving 
almost enough, but it's hard to tell how much it needs to be yeah. and where it sits when it's already in. So there's a bit of play on this. And then this has to go. You have the old fuel pump? It's at home. It's yeah. at home too. Yeah. I thought I'd put everything in the... Is that the original at home? Yeah. Okay. You know, that's just strange. This is a mechanical thing, right? Mechanical linkages. And that, that's a rod that's sitting on the engine uh -huh. that goes up into the pump. Uh -huh. And when I took the fuel line off the carburetor after, I, like when I had to swap uh -huh. out the jets and things a couple of times, I mean, I literally got fuel sort of spurting out of it a little bit. Uh -huh. So I had to then uh, put, you know, rag right, underneath sure. it and such. So I know the fuel pump was able to produce plenty of fuel okay. and plenty of pressure. So nothing mechanically has changed. It's right. not like this thing cracked right, or broke exactly. or this yeah. is too tall or, you yeah. know, any of that fuss. Sure. That's what's so odd. And mm. I tested this. There's a bit of play in the bottom of this thing. Uh -huh. You can see just a little bit of right, play. Right, sure. Right? Uh -huh. But all you have to do after that, literally, is just the smallest little movement uh -huh. and it will go. So if we take out the slack, right, uh -huh. and then just move, say, an eighth of an inch, and then let go. Uh -huh. See? Fuel. Yeah. yeah, sure. I just doesn't have to move far at all. Uh-huh. I mean, that's just the teeniest little movement in addition to I taking see. up the slack. Uh-huh. And that rod seemed like it moved up and down yes. a good uh, three-eighths of an inch. Oh, it did it? Okay. It did it, which probably sure. moved. So it's got to take the slack out of this. It's fine. Well, let me... I know it worked. It worked. Yeah. It got you here. Yeah. I know. Got you it to did. This part of the yeah, road. It, yeah, it did. So that and just... It was really fine. Strange. It was great. At, uh, you think it has something to do with it being hot? And that I no, it gets... the pump is cold and the fuel flowing through it is cold. Yes, that could be an issue. Yes, with pumps that pull from long distances, like the gas tanks all the way up in the front of this car, that's how you get vapor lock. You never get vapor lock on a pump that pushes. That's why they put uh, pumps in the fuel tank now and not back here. Oh, I see. Because they don't want that to happen anymore. Like, I'm a little tired of that. I think we figured out that the, um, it, it wasn't the carburetor, it's the, it, and it's not technically the fuel pump, but there's a little rod that rides up and down here, uh -huh. and that rod goes up and down. It pushes this little lever inside the fuel pump, yeah. and the problem is that the rod is just not pushing the lever nearly enough to get enough fuel. It's like the rod's like an eighth of an inch too short. It's possible that... So this is the rod. And, and the end of it's a little, see, it's been sort of, I don't know, it looks like it's just sort of, like, too short. Like, this might, I don't know, this doesn't look like an actual Volkswagen part. But the end of it looks like it's been sort of sheared off or peened or ground or, I don't know what somebody did to it. But the rod itself is now a little bit too short. The, the way it works inside the pump is this rod pushes up here against that and then there's a spring that pushes it back so it needs to push it down to pull the pump down then the spring pushes the arm back up and that's the pumping action as this thing goes up and down and up and down and up and down to rocks back and forth yeah exactly it's exactly like that so um, the problem is that we're not getting enough movement it's just moving it just a smidgen and it's just not enough so I, what I was hoping was to kind of bend this down a little bit but it, it will have no part of that because it's a fairly strong piece. <clears throat> it's got these strong ridges here. Mm -hmm. Just do something to get this, uh, to just get a little more movement. I think what we can do is get you home and put the the original pump back in. Because I don't think the original pump was actually a problem. Oh, okay. So, um, we just need to get you home. It well, got you here. Yeah. yeah. That's the fun. They have thing. minds of their own. If you think about it, yeah, no it's kidding. been running for whatever yeah, and right. it got you here. And it almost seems like the, the wear on the end of this pin looks uh -huh. like newish. Like no, we got on the highway after we left you guys this morning and Jerry said, oh my God, she's running so smooth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah, great. And then when we, she's not running at we all. stopped at the kids. <laughs> we went in there for like... A little bit. the deer. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Are you lost? They're so cute. <laughs> well, it seems to be working. Well, the pump's working. That's not really the issue. 
The pump's, pump's fine. There's nothing really technically wrong with the pump itself. Oh, the pump. It's this rod's too short. How weird. Long, easy. Too long, that's easy. Too short, not, not, not so much. <laughs> well, maybe it was too long and then somebody shortened it and now we need it longer. It looks like it was put on a bench grinder and, and there's even a bit of metal around the edge. Really? Yeah, like somebody shortened it for some reason. Ugh. I wonder if it's even the right part. Well, I lost my camera person, so Heidi wanted to take Judy home. So I kind of lost Heidi filming everything, but I want to walk you through what I did. So. Let's just pretend that this is that rod that goes down into the engine and it's the push rod that goes up and down and activates the bottom of the pump. I had to make it a little bit longer. So I was just, I was, I was just trying to think of ways I could make it longer. I couldn't think of anything I could put over the top of it or anything. And then I remembered something. We had been replacing some of the rubber plugs on the vacuum lines on the carburetor and I remember Jerry had said that he had kept those parts in the car. So this is a great reason why you always want to keep all your spare parts and, and keep a bag in the car. So we had them. So they look a bit like this. There's just a bunch of little um, black rubber plugs, all different sizes. So the ones on the carburetor that we needed were actually pretty small. So it left us with a bunch of large black plugs. And I started thinking about it and I thought, you know, the top of that might be just enough. If we cut this a bit, maybe trim it a little bit, we could get it to work. So what I did was I took the, took the rod and, and put this guy on there, but it was, it was, it wouldn't allow the rod to go all the way down. And also it was just, it was just a little too high on the top. So what I did was I went ahead, since this big old monster thing, uh, and cut it quite a bit. So I cut it about, say here-ish. I cut it down to about this size and popped it over the top. And then I thought, well, okay, well, I'll just put it down and we'll see where we are. So the next scene you see is me testing it and you'll see what happened next. Okay, what do we, are we, just a few seconds or what? Yeah, just a second. Oh, just a few seconds. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Mm. It ha might have to fill up the fuel filter and stuff, so give yeah. it another try. Okay. Oh boy, you are just horrible. Uh, <laughs> is being stubborn. Yeah, stubborn. That's not it. You think that's not it? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Just rolling this thing around in my head. And the only thing I think of is that, it, that maybe that rubber piece got pushed up there and then it won't come back down. And so the, the pump has to go up and down yeah. and up and down. Oh. So let me, uh, let me work with it. If you get like you want to go home, Heidi will take you home. Oh, I'm fine. So. I do that. All what do you time. think? Friend? I don't know. It's not that tiny in there. Well, as you can see from that, I wasn't completely successful on my first try. The problem was that the rubber plug was just a little bit too long. So I went ahead and trimmed it a bit. It wasn't allowing the pump lever to come back down. So that's where it actually pumps. So I trimmed this a little bit and trimmed the edges of it a little bit so it wouldn't get stuffed and stuck up under there and uh, put the pump back on again, had Jerry crank it over and sure enough, gas. So it was great. We were getting gas out of the pump. So I went ahead and put the carburetor back on, hooked everything back up and we cranked for a bit, filled up the float bowl and sure enough, the engine fired. So that was that. It was great. So this is an example of sort of an emergency procedure just to get yourself home. We'll never leave this rubber plug in on that rod. In fact, I had Jerry go ahead and order a full kit, which is a new pump, the, the correct rod, 
the little phenolic spacer that goes in there and two gaskets. So here's the deal. There's actually two different fuel pumps for this car depending on whether the car has a generator or an alternator. So the original one with the generator is a little bit taller pump, but the alternator, the problem with the alternator is it's bigger in diameter. So the pump had to be a little squattier. So therefore the rod had to be shorter. So what I think happened was the previous owner of the car put in one of the newer pumps. So, so 73 or 74 and newer, the alternator car pumps and found that he had to grind his original rod because the now it was too long ground it down a little bit so that the fuel pressure wasn't too high. So that's all fine until Jerry bought the car and he didn't know that. He thought he had some problems with the pump so he went ahead and bought a new pump for the car and told the guy across the counter that it's a 1969. They give him an old pump for a generator engine that requires the longer rod. Now so he didn't realize he had the shorter rod. So the problem is that that rod was just barely long enough to push the pump and it sort of worked, but there was no grease. They didn't tell Jerry he had to put grease in the bottom of this thing. And so it ended up sort of wearing the top of the rod a bit, just enough so that after a couple of months of driving around, the pump no longer, the rod was too short and the pump could no longer pump any gas and that's why he ended up on the side of the road. It was just a terrible coincidence. It happened to be the day that we delivered the car back. So we're going to put together a video of installing that fuel pump and checking the fuel pressure and that'll be great fun. So look for that coming up. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll go ahead and get to them. Thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.